Welcome back. May is Bladder Cancer Awareness Month, and joining us this morning with information on the signs and symptoms and treatment of bladder cancer is Scripps Clinic urologist Dr. Ramdev Kanajedi. Good morning, doctor. Thank you for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. This is an important topic this morning because it is the sixth most common type of cancer, and there are 80,000 new cases expected this year in the U.S. alone. That's right. Uh, even though it's the sixth most common type of cancer, it happens to be the costliest cancer to treat for the American healthcare system also. Wow. So it has a huge impact on just the overall uh, society. And, and we don't really hear a lot about bladder cancer. Why is that? Well, as you mentioned, it is the sixth most common, so there are plenty of other cancers we do hear about, but uh, it can be very devastating for people who do suffer from bladder cancer, uh, if particularly if it's an advanced stage or grade. And, and because it usually gets to an advanced stage unfortunately because the signs and symptoms can come by can sometimes seem as if they're something else right well the most common uh, sign or symptom that we think about uh, related to bladder cancer would be blood in the urine so if an individual painless blood in the urine that needs to be evaluated by a uh, physician ideally a urologist to make sure that it's not being caused by something like bladder cancer but there's a, many many other things it could be something as straightforward as a kidney stone but there are many things that can cause blood in the urine but if it's painless uh, that needs to be evaluated so what are some of the other signs and symptoms that we need to keep an eye out for well other less common things that can be uh, uh, a presentation of bladder cancer can be voiding symptoms, uh, pain with urination, frequent urination, burning with urination. But again, there are many other more common things that do present that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the appropriate individual with risk factors, you do need to think about the possibility of bladder cancer as well. And like so many other cancers, if it's caught early, there is a good survival rate um, for a number of years. But typically in women, especially, we're seeing that it's caught in the later stages. Um. It, that's true. I think in general, though, if we sort of divide in a very basic sense bladder cancer into superficial bladder cancer, which is sitting on the surface of the bladder, or invasive bladder cancer growing into the wall of the bladder. And for folks with superficial bladder cancer, when detected and managed appropriately, uh, five and ten year survival rates can exceed 85, 90 percent. Wow. And we were kind of talking uh, during the break that there are some things, obviously smoke being a big one that can put you at risk for cancers like bladder cancer. Smoking is probably the biggest risk factor. A common story that we hear are people who smoked many, many years ago. They smoked for a substantial amount of time, but then they stopped and maybe 30 years later they pop up with bladder cancer. That's not an uncommon thing, particularly in our uh, veteran population, folks who served in Korea or Vietnam where they had ready access cigarettes but then when they came home they stopped smoking that's not an uncommon thing that we see Wow. so let's talk about some of the, the treatments available and I know uh, immunotherapy is something that is, is advancing as a treatment now yeah there's actually for many many years there wasn't much in the way of advances in therapy for bladder cancer but recently particularly with something called the cancer genome atlas where we were able to basically look at the entire genome for bladder cancer to figure out what exactly causes the disease we're, we've learned so much more and we're now actually dividing it into different types of bladder cancer to potentially determine what types of treatment people would be uh, candidates for instead of sort of shotgunning everybody with the same type of treatment that we had been for years. Uh, immunotherapy is one that's proven to be uh, somewhat promising uh, for people who either cannot tolerate chemotherapy or who have failed chemotherapy. All right, Dr. Conagetti, thank you for coming in this morning. Important information. Thanks for having us. me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Well, the